Hey, what is up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan and it's gonna get a little bit toasty in here because for this video we are going to explain the law of conservation of energy, define heat, and perform calculations involving heat, mass, temperature change, and specific heat. As always, breaking it down a little bit for you, you may have recognized that content objective very similar to the one in the previous video. This time, we're going to look at it a little bit differently and we're going to focus on the idea or the formula of heat. And that is Q equals MC delta T, MCAT for those of you who don't know the Greek alphabet, and solve for any of those variables. Okay, so when we talk about energy transfer for this class, we're really going to be focused on the transfer of heat energy. And so let's take a couple of moments to really dive in to better understand this idea of heat. Uh, in order to determine the amount of heat that is transferred, it really depends on three things. One, you need to know what is the mass of the substance that's gaining or losing heat. Two, you need to know what's called the specific heat capacity of that substance, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then three, you also need to know what is the temperature change that the substance undergoes. If you can determine those three things, you can determine the amount of heat that has been transferred. Okay, now the only one of those things that I think is maybe a little bit difficult uh, when you're starting out is the idea of specific heat capacity. Uh, it is most easily understood as the heat required to raise the temperature of that substance of one gram of that substance by one degree Celsius. And everything has its own unique specific heat. And it's important that you recognize that typically metals have relatively low specific heats, whereas things like water specifically has a relatively high specific heat. And again, what this means is, you know, how much energy do you need to add in order to get the temperature of one gram of that substance to increase one degree Celsius. And so think about how it really doesn't take a whole lot of time for you to get a metal pan really hot. It doesn't take you a whole lot of energy input to get that sucker to heat up. But the water that may be in that pot on your stove is going to take a lot more energy input. It takes a lot more time before it finally gets up to the temperature that you want it to. I think a great way to understand specific heat and to recognize that each substance sort of has its own unique specific heat capacity is to think about warm apple pie. Or if you've ever had a Pop-Tart or if you've ever had a pizza roll. Anything that has sort of a nice, gooey, watery center, but the sort of crusty, non-watery outside. Because water has such a high specific heat, not only does it take a lot of energy for it to heat up, it's also take a lot of time for it to release that energy and cool back down relative to things that are non-watery. So if you've ever bitten into a Pop-Tart thinking that it was cool because you were like really hungry and you wanted to eat that Pop-Tart, uh, but then you like scald the top of your mouth because you get to the inside and the inside is like scalding hot. It's because specific heat of water is so much higher than the non-watery crusty outside. Also important to keep in mind that the sign of heat or Q can be either positive or negative depending on whether heat is transferred into the substance or out of the substance. So recognize that the sign of your heat, Q, is really dependent upon the temperature change. Recognize that if the final temperature is greater than the initial temperature, you are gonna have a positive Q value. In other words, heat was transferred into that object. It got hotter at the end than it was at the beginning. However, you also have situations where the final temperature is less than the initial temperature and you'll have a negative sign for your Q, which simply means that heat has been transferred out of the object. But regardless, keep in mind that the sign is just telling us whether or not heat has been transferred into or out of the object. You can't have a negative amount of heat. It's just describing for us the directionality of the heat transfer, into, out of. Okay, and then the last thing to keep in mind as we talk about heat and heat transfer is that we will most commonly be using the units of joules, but you should be comfortable with and recognize that you can convert between calories and or kilocalories if necessary. And you won't have to memorize the conversion factors, but 
recognize that if you're provided with those conversion factors, you need to be able to convert between the different units. Okay, and that brings us to an end for today's video. Check out some of those amazing animations and videos that I used in the presentation.